Viviamo in un periodo in We are living in a time where in just a few years new automotive brands can come out of the blue and make themselves known all around the world and seemingly overnight especially due to the shift towards electric cars factories are changing faster than ever before but at the same time with this momentum towards the future there is another phenomenon which is becoming more and more prevalent This is of course the revival of storied brands from the past with modern reinterpretations just like the following the Iso Revolta GT Zagato And it's right here in Zagato's Milan studio where the idea to pay homage to the history of Iso Revolta emerged as well as the work of its founder Renzo Revolta and after him his son Piero the inspiration behind the Iso Revolta GTZ lies in the Iso Revolta A3C of 1965 the Berlinetta Stradale version of the A3 Corsa of 1963 the winner of its category at Le Mans in 1964 and again in 1965 The central idea behind the project is one of neoclassical design. In other words, inspired by the past without being a carbon copy of the original and introducing new elements as well. This is a design philosophy that only a few cars have ever been able to pull off in the past 50 years. Think of the Porsche 911 or the Ford GT or the continued relevance of the American muscle car. And what about the winding, contoured shapes of the A3C, typical of the 1960s, a historical moment when other absolute masterpieces in automotive design showcased the same stylish design language. Take the Jaguar E-Type of 1961 for example, or even a year later, the Ferrari 250 GTO, which was one of the most desirable cars for collectors from all over the world and it still is today. How could we not mention the 1966 Lamborghini Miura, a revolutionary car, featuring the modern supercar mechanical setup, but also with a chassis that retains the characteristically compact dimensions of its time. And one could never forget the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale, another case of a truly transcendent car. a masterpiece hailing from the same time period the 1960s the Iso Revolta A3C had a couple of innovative technical solutions which at the time were very rare the engine was on the front but placed in an almost front central position and the chassis was developed with a focus on wind tunnel studies these are the shapes of the A3C its long bonnet the rounded windshield and the side of the car they're marked by a double wave pattern that inspired the lines and proportions of its modern reincarnation the GTZ Zagato's workshop took cues from other stylish elements of its ancestor as well like the smooth wings which integrate into the lateral hood scoops and the sharply sloping tail typical of a fast back car and by using carbon fiber material for just two big elements of the chassis they tried to mitigate the car's weight in order to evoke a sculpted appearance a feature that really impressed me in particular with reference to the history of the Iso Revolta is the origins of the logo chosen for the brand the griffin i'll tell you about that with some pictures of the inside of the A3C still sliding across the screen here bringing you back to the car's era During those years, Renzo Revolta owned many grand touring vehicles, brands like Jaguar or Maserati. However, he was unsatisfied with these models, especially the race cars. The way they behaved on the road and the low reliability was for him unacceptable. He was convinced that this was a point of contention among other GT owners of the time. That's why he decided to build a grand touring car himself. A similar story can be found with Ferruccio Lamborghini, who founded his own automotive brand due to the dissatisfaction with Enzo Ferrari's road cars.
So what does all of this have to do with the Griffin logo of the ESO Revolta? Well, symbolically, Revolta's desire to create grand touring cars that were better than the others on the market pairs with the meaning of the Griffin in mythology. In ancient Greek culture, it symbolized power and perfection because it was a creature with the head of an eagle and the body of a lion, two of the most magnificent animals in nature. So two perfect metaphors for the attempt to improve upon glaring flaws in the road reliability of other Gran Turismo vehicles of the time. To accomplish this, the Iso Revolta had an advanced chassis compared to the technical solutions used by their competitors. This chassis provided the Iso Revolta's characteristic driving mode, engineered for owners who wanted to enjoy long journeys with these cars. During the time of economic recovery and growth after World War II, airplanes and high-speed trains weren't widely accessible, and anyone who wanted to move quickly and in a comfortable way used to drive grand touring cars. Travelling along open country roads such as the one we're now showing you, without the traffic of modern towns. With careful engineering, a defining feature of all Iso Revolta models, of the 1960s at least, the company gained a reputation for higher reliability compared to competing GTs. This meticulous nature is still apparent on the present-day GTZ. The modern Iso Revolta. The chassis is made in Italy with a large displacement American engine. This is the design chosen more than 50 years ago by Iso Revolta to get a fast and relaxing Gran Turismo and, as we mentioned before, strong and reliable. On the modern GTZ, this trademark, this DNA, has been preserved. Just listen. Listen! In this specific case, the donor car, that is the car being used as the basis for a project like the GTZ, is from the latest generation. It's from the last model generation, the Chevrolet Corvette C7 with a front engine, as opposed to Chevrolet's current model, the C8, a sports car with a rear central engine. By the 1970s, not long after the beginning of the production of its grand touring vehicles, the Iso Revolta brand was already recognized by consumers for its innovative approach of mixing together the design and the sportiness of Italian cars with the torque and solidity of American engines. The modern GTZ gets the supercharged 6.2-litre V8 from a Corvette Z06. It makes 660 horsepower and the 650 pound-feet of torque available from just 3,600 RPM. Acceleration to 100 kilometers per hour or 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 3.7 seconds and it features a top speed of 310 kilometers per hour. With an 8-speed automatic transmission or 7-speed manual, it depends on which Corvette is used as the donor. The GTZ inherits from the Corvette a great equilibrium in the dynamic drive mode with a balance between the front end and the rear end, which is very neutral in both weight distribution and the calibration of the suspension springs and dampers. The GTZ is a sports car and inspires a great amount of trust when you increase its pace. The brake pedal is stable and easy to calibrate. When using the sportier drive modes, the steering wheel reacts faster and more consistent with the dynamic load, which provides a fast but still relaxed driving style. Because the front end is already very solid and owing to the nice wide front tyres, they're 285s with a rim width of 30, the GTZ's front grip inspires more confidence than you might expect. In fact, the rear end follows on accurately as a result of the platform's neutral tuning. At this point, the only thing left to do is to enjoy the inexhaustible thrust reserve of the engine while coming around bends. Even better, if you shift into a higher gear or two, you can press harder on the accelerator, letting the never-ending torque of a 6.2-litre V8 like this one, with more than one volumetric discharge to do the work, offering a driving experience that we don't often see nowadays. And we couldn't not talk about the visceral sound that envelops the cabin. You can hear it growling, even while climbing through the gears and the sound of the electronics managing, double clutching during gear changes. It's just a delight. The automatic transmission isn't faster than those of previous generations, but in the most dynamic driving modes, it does go well together with the engine character of the car. It lets you travel with great pace and with the feeling that the mechanical components aren't under stress. This is in complete harmony 
with the Gran Turismo ethos. And this was the aim of the project of the GTZ, to evoke this kind of long journeys with a brisk pace that its inspiration, the A3C, was designed for. Moving on to the manufacturing details compared to the Corvette C7 Z06, the Ezo Revolta GTZ has a brand new carbon fiber chassis, as well as a partially redesigned cockpit colloquially known as the Greenhouse, with unique roof contours, windshield, lateral windows and rear windshield. Moreover, the rear pillars are shifted slightly backwards and integrated into the leather upholstery, giving the interior a more streamlined feel. In this part of the body, other distinguishing aesthetic elements include the door handles, which fold into the central pillar. With respect to the car's A3C inspiration, the GTZ features both custom-designed external logos and headlights and tail lights. The alloy wheels are custom-made and measure 20 inches versus the 19s on the Corvette C7, and the exhaust is now a wide, trapezoidal outlet that spans the center of the rear. Inside, the dashboard has been reshaped and covered with leather, with the center console available in two variants. It can be in leather as well or milled from a massive aluminium ingot. Other milled aluminium details appear throughout the cockpit with a variety of chrome plating options available as well. With the personalization of the GTZ continuing on the rear, where there's a lot of space at your disposal due to the roof inclination. And lastly, the trunk handle. It's hidden here inside the bumper in order to keep it from view. The first GTZ released was in a Monza green tone, and they plan on building 18 more variations of it. For manufacturing, they need about five months per car since they can't begin work until the Corvette arrives. The cost for this customization, including the donor car, is about 800,000 euros, excluding the taxes and personalization. Of course, we're talking about a collector's item, and the GTZ is already nominated for the Concours d'Elegance 2021 in Pebble Beach. But beyond being a fashionable piece of art, this car represents the next step in the legacy of a historical car. In a time where the industry is changing as it moves towards electrification, cars like this will serve as reminders of a cultural lineage, and perhaps they'll be used for special occasions and in exclusive events where internal combustion vehicles can be celebrated as vintage pieces, similar to what's already happening with mechanical watches compared to the modern smartwatch.